بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استقال حديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار مرحبا بكم جميعا اهلا وسهلا ويا اسك الله عز وجل to make this gathering of ours one that will be upon our scales of good during these virtuous days in blessed time as we are within the first 10 days of dhul hijjah and these days are the best days of the year the best days of the dunya to be exact as has come in the narration on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu anhuma qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam afdalu ayyam ad-dunya ayyam al-ashr Jabir ibn Abdullah may Allah be pleased with him and his father He stated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the best days of the dunya are the 10 days meaning by this the first 10 days of dhul hijjah Here we have an authentic narration on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he has described the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah as being the best days of the dunya. And in the previous talk that was given regarding the benefits of al-hajj we covered that 
doing good deeds during the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, these deeds are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As has come in the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma min ayyam al amru salih fiha أحب إلى الله من هذه الأيام قالوا يا رسول الله ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله إلا رجل خرج بنفسه وماله فلم يرجع من ذلك بشيء أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله بن عباس may Allah be pleased with him and his father he mentioned that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he stated that there are no days in which the righteous action is most beloved to Allah than these days meaning the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they said, not even al-jihad or striving in the path of Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, not even al-jihad or striving in the path of Allah, except for a man who leaves out with his life and his wealth. And then he doesn't return back with anything from that, meaning that he dies in battle. So these narrations are indication of the superiority of these days. And doing good during these days is unlike doing good in other days. And the believer should be striving to get closer to Allah as a wajal during this time. The believer should be striving to take advantage of this golden opportunity to make one's scale of good deeds heavy on the day of judgment. For those whose scales are heavy on the day of judgment, and then they will have a good ending. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, فَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُ فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةِ الرَّادِيَةِ And as for the one whose scales are heavy with good deeds, then this is the one who will live a pleasant life, a life that one is pleased with, meaning in the paradise. And here we have the opportunity in front of us to do good and increase in our nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal by doing acts of worship during a time where the acts of worship are most beloved to Allah. And here we find <clears throat> that these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are the best days of the dunya. Why is that? Number one, because deeds during this time are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another matter that is mentioned is that during this time, you find the people implementing and performing the fundamental acts of ibadah. From the testimony of faith, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, from the salah, from the ibadah of one's wealth, al ibadah al maliyah, 
You find that people are fasting during this time. And likewise, the people are making the Hajj to the sacred house of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Hajj is from the pillars of Islam and from the greatest of the acts of worship in Islam. And it is performed or it begins on the 8th of Dhul Hijjah. And during the Hajj, the greatest day of Hajj is the day of Arafah. And we notice due to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding the importance of Arafah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alayhi wasallam, he stated, Al Hajj Arafa. That the Hajj is Arafa. The scholars, they explain that this statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alayhi wasallam is from the Jawami al Kalam. And that is the ability that the Prophet Sallallahu was given to speak with few words, but these few words have vast and tremendous meaning. Al-Hajj Arafah, it means that in order for one's Hajj to be accepted, the person has to be in Arafah on the day of Arafah or during the time when it is legislated for one to be in Arafah. And that whoever misses standing in Arafah, then they have missed the Hajj. The Hajj is incomplete. Also the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Hajj Arafah, is an, is an indication of the greatness of this day and the importance of the Arafah and the great virtue that Arafah has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For on this day of Arafah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the greatest of favors. And that is Allah azza wa jal, he completed the religion of al-Islam on the day of Arafah. And this is from the greatest of the virtues, if not the greatest of the virtues of the day of Arafah. That on this blessed and noble day, Allah Azza wa Jal, he completed the religion. Al-Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he brings a narration in the book, Kitab al Atisam bil Kitab wa Sunnah. And this is in his Sahih. The book, the holding on to the book in the Sunnah. And the first narration that Al Imam al Bukhari rahimahullah he brought An Tariq ibn Shihab Kala Kala Rajulun min al Yahud. يا أمير المؤمنين لو أن علينا نزلت هذه الآية اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت ما عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا لاتخذنا ذلك اليوم عيدا فقال عمر رضي الله عنه إني لأعلم أي يوم نزلت هذه الآية 
nazalat yawma arafa fi yawmi jumu'a al imam al bukhari rahimahullah he brings the narration on the authority of tariq ibn shihab that a man from amongst the jews he said o commander of the believers If this verse had came down upon us, and then he mentioned the statement of Allah, this day I have completed for you your religion, and I have perfected upon you my favor, and I am pleased for you Islam as a religion. The man from amongst the Yahud, he said to Umar, radiallahu anhuma, radiallahu an, that had the likes of this verse been revealed upon us, meaning upon us Jews, we certainly would have taken that day as a day of celebration. So Umar ibn Khattab, he said to him, Indeed I know on which day this verse came down. This verse came down on the day of Arafah, during the day of Jumu'ah. This narration, Barakallahu Fikum, is one of many and tremendous benefits, lessons, and a reminder for the believers. Here we have a man from amongst the Yahud going to Umar ibn al-Khattab addressing him by the title of respect and that title is the commander of the believers as Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an he was a man of great virtue he was a man of justice and fairness whether he dealt with the Muslims or the non-Muslims. And Umar ibn al-Khattab, his practice of the religion, his adherence to the Book of Allah and following of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar ibn al-Khattab was a man who was respected as well as feared by the Muslims and non-Muslims alike. And even the shaitan, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned from the virtues of Umar, that when Umar radiallahu an is coming down one path, the shaitan, he takes another path. So here we have this man from the Yahud saying, O commander of the believers, addressing Umar by the title of respect. And it's a shame that you find individuals who claim that they are Muslims. And I'm referring to the Rafida and the Shia. These individuals, they claim that they are Muslims. However, they speak ill of Umar ibn Khattab. Radiallahu an. And they do not acknowledge him as being the commander of the believers. Rather, they view that Umar ibn Khattab was a disbeliever. And they view that the majority of the Sahaba apostated or disbelieved after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, except for a small few, excluding the family members of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Umar ibn Khattab, rightfully so, is the commander of the believers. And this title was given to him, radiallahu an.
ان اهل السنة والجماعة we view that the best Muslim after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and he is Khalifa to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is the Khalifa of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then after Abu Bakr the best Muslim is Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an Amir al-Mu'mineen the commander of the believers this is the creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And those who spoke ill of Abu Bakr and Umar during the time of the Khilafah of Ali bin Abi Talib, radiallahu an, Ali bin Abi Talib, he lashed them with the lashing of slander. Those who gave uh, virtue to him. Ali radiallahu an over Abu Bakr and Umar and did not recognize their rights and their status and their virtue and did not give them their proper due that was given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Jew he says to Umar ibn Khattab, O commander, of the believers, if the likes of this verse have been revealed upon us, and then the Jew he quotes the verse Aliyoma Akamalatu Lakum Dina Kum wa Atimantu Malaikum Nirmati or Aldito Lakum in Islam Madina. He quotes the verse This day I have completed for you your religion and I have perfected upon you my favor. And I am pleased for you, Islam, as your religion. This is an indication that the Jews or the Yahud, they are people who have knowledge. However, they are individuals who do not practice what they know. As Allah Azza wa Jal described the Yahud, يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ and they know him, meaning they know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, just as they know their own sons. Meaning the Jews, they knew that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was truly a prophet and messenger from Allah. However, they did not adhere to the knowledge. So throughout the Quran, you find that Allah. Azza wa Jal warns us from following the ways of the Yahud, having knowledge and not practicing that which we know. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, condemning the Yahud, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Do you command the people with righteousness but yet you forget your own selves while you also read the scripture do you not have any sense so this is Allah Azza wa Jal rebuking the Yahud for having knowledge and commanding the people with good but yet they themselves do not adhere to the knowledge that they have and this is a blameworthy characteristic for one to have and the rebuke is not just for the Yahud, as this is their primary characteristic. But it also is a rebuke for anyone from amongst the Muslims who resembles the Yahud. As the Salaf they mention, that whoever does not implement his knowledge, fihi shabahun min al Yahud that he has a resemblance of the Jews. And whoever worships Allah out of ignorance, فِيهِ شَبْهُمْ مِنَ النَّصَارَى that he has a resemblance of the Christians. So having knowledge and not practicing the knowledge is the way of the Yahud 
And worshipping Allah based upon ignorance is the way of the Nasara, the Christians. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions in Surah Al-Fatiha, اِهْدِينَ الصِّرَاطُ وَالْمُسْتَقِيمُ صِرَاطُ وَالَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَضْبُوضِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَضَّالِينَ Something that we say at least 17 times in a day throughout our prayers. Guide us to the straight path. The path of those whom your favor is upon, not the path of those whom your anger is upon, nor those who are astray. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, Al-Maghdub alayhim humu al-Yahud, wa dhalun humu al-Nasara. The Prophet Wasallam said, Those whom Allah's anger is upon, they are the Jews. And those whom are astray, they are the Christians. Why is Allah's anger upon the Yahud? The ulama explained that it is due to them having ilm, having knowledge of what Allah has revealed, but not implementing that which they know. And the reason why the Nasara are considered to be misguided and astray because they worship Allah based upon ignorance. So he mentioned the verse to Umar ibn Khattab. And it is as if he was indirectly trying to criticize the Muslims. That here it is, you have a great verse in your Quran, in your book, but you have not taken this day as a day of Eid. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, being a man of knowledge, being the most knowledgeable of this Ummah, after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Umar ibn Khattab being a man of knowledge, he knew the verse, and he knew that which was connected to the verse as far as when the verse came down. And here, Barakallahu Fikum, the lesson that we learn is that we as Muslims, we have to know the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that if we are ever approached by the people of the book, and they question us concerning the book of Allah, that we have the knowledge to respond to their question. That we have the knowledge to establish the truth of the matter. This is one of the benefits in knowing Allah's book. Of course, first and foremost, we learn the book of Allah for ourselves. To raise ignorance up off of ourselves and to be guided by Allah's book. But another reason why we learn the book of Allah, Azza wa Jal, is for the purpose of calling the people to Allah's book and being able to defend Allah's book. Defending the religion of Al-Islam by defending Allah's book. But if a person is ignorant of the Qur'an, and then you have someone from the people of the book coming and questioning about the Qur'an. And here it is, the Muslim, he doesn't know his book, but yet the non-Muslim has knowledge of the Qur'an that the Muslim doesn't have. This is something that is embarrassing and it is not befitting. We are the ones who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones who believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are the ones whom Allah Azza wa Jal has favored with Islam. So with that being said, it is important that we know this book. For this is where the guidance is. As Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions, إِنَّ الْهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ Indeed, this Qur'an guides to that which is more upright and more just. Allah Azza wa Jal described the Qur'an, Huda lil muttaqin, guidance for the people who have taqwa. 
So it is a must that we know the Book of Allah so that ignorance can be raised from us so that we can attain the guidance that is within the Qur'an by the permission of Allah so that we can call the people to the Book of Allah so that we can defend the Book of Allah especially when the people who are adversaries to Islam and they study the Qur'an and they look for contradictions and they come with doubts to try to discredit the Qur'an we have to be people who are grounded in the knowledge of the Qur'an so that we can refute this falsehood so that we can combat the doubts that the adversaries of Al-Islam they bring to discredit the Qur'an to cause people to apostate from the religion or to deter people from entering into the religion in the first place. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an he mentioned indeed I know where this verse was revealed. It was revealed on the day of Arafah during the day of Jumu'ah. The statement of Allah, this day I have completed for you your religion, shows that Islam is a complete way of life. And when this verse came down on the day of Arafah, the ulama, they mentioned that no new rules or regulations came after this verse from the halal and the haram. That was it. And this was Allah Azza wa Jal choosing this magnificent time, the day of Arafah during the Hajj, and it was the only Hajj of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the farewell Hajj, to complete the religion, to reveal that he has completed the religion. Meaning by that, we are not in, a, in need of another prophet, another messenger to come with another book. Different from the previous nations, where one prophet and messenger will come, he will come with a book, he will die, then there will be a need for another prophet or messenger to come with revelation or a book to guide the people. Well, alhamdulillah, this is not the case of this ummah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is Khatim al Nabiyyin. He is the seal of the prophets. No more prophets are coming after him. This is from the completion of this religion. Allah Azza wa Jal in the verse mentions that He has completed, He has perfected His favor upon us. Islam is a ni'mah. So when we speak about the virtues of the day of Arafah, it is a reminder of the great blessing that Allah has given to us by allowing us to be guided to Islam. Because we have a complete, perfect way of life. There are no contradictions in this religion. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مَنْ عِنْدِي غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا do they not ponder over the Qur'an? And had it been from other than Allah, they would have found many discrepancies and contradictions within it. Alhamdulillah, there are no contradictions in the Qur'an, no discrepancies in the Qur'an. This way of life is a complete, perfect way of life. This is a ni'mah. In every aspect of life, we have guidance. In the matters of creed, in the matters of worship, in the matters of mannerisms, in the matter of our business transactions and the dealings that we have with one another. Look at the books, look at the books that have been written by the scholars past and present, dealing with the adhkar and the dua the words of remembrance and the words of supplication. And in our day and time, we have a tremendous work 
from the likes of the noble sheikh and scholar, a sheikh Abdul Razak, Ibn Abdul Muhsin, Al Badr, Hafidhuhum Allah. He has a tremendous work dealing with the legislated afkar and dua. And I encourage the brothers and the sisters to make sure that they have this book in their libraries and that they benefit from this book, learning the different afkar for the different situations in life. And when you go through the book, you see, and this is a ni'mah from Allah Azza wa Jalla upon us, that in basically in every aspect of life, there are words of remembrance. There's dua to be made. And this is an indication of the completeness and the perfection of this deen. And may Allah Azza wa Jalla reward our Shaykh Abdul Razak, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, one of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, one Jama'ah in our time, and one of the defenders of this deen, and one of the great teachers of this deen in our day and time. Different from the evil individuals, who speak bad about the likes of Sheikh Abdul Razak and slander the Sheikh Abdul Razak by saying that he doesn't warn against the people of innovation and the likes. Alhamdulillah, this is a great slander upon the Sheikh. Rather, the Sheikh is from the scholars of Medina who warns against innovation and teach the people the religion of Allah and cultivate the people upon the Tawheed of Allah and the following of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, so this deen, Barakallah Fikun, is a deen of completion and perfection. And this is a ni'mah from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And also Allah Azza Wa Jal is pleased with this way of life. So when we speak about the virtues of Arafah, we remember that this is the way of life that Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with. This is the way of life that Allah Azza wa Jal, He wants for His slaves. And any other way of life that is in opposition to Islam, it is rejected. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ That whoever desires a religion or way of life other than Al-Islam, it will never be accepted from him and in the hereafter the person will be from amongst the losers. Desiring a religion or way of life other than Islam is divided into two categories. Those who desire a way of life other than Islam in totality and that is by way of them choosing another religion other than Islam Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism or other than that and then you have the choosing of other than Al-Islam as a religion in a partial manner and this is in reference to the Muslims who are from the people of innovation. They are Muslims, they are within the fold of Islam, however, they have from their practices, they have from matters in Aqidah that are not from the teachings of the Kitab and the Sunnah. So, according to the level of them being upon innovation, this determines how much they have chosen other than the religion of Al-Islam as their religion. And Allah, he mentions in the hereafter, they will be from amongst the losers. The losers are of two categories. You have the permanent losers, and then you have the temporary losers. The permanent losers are those who die upon kufr, major kufr, major shirk. Those who die upon a religion other than al-Islam. Allah will not forgive them. As Allah, as mentions, in Allah, 
ان الله لا يغفر ان يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء Indeed, Allah does not forgive that partners are associated with him, meaning if a person dies in that state, but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he wills. And as for the temporary losers, then they are the people from Ahl al-Bid'ah who are still within the fold of Islam who will go to the hellfire. And indeed, Ahl al-Bid'ah are threatened with being punished in the hellfire, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, وَسَتَفْتَرِكُ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ عَلَى ثَلَاثٍ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةٍ كُلُّهَا فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا وَاحِدًا قَالُوا مَا هِيَ تِلْكَ الْفِرْقَةِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ الْجَمَعَةِ وَفِي رِوَايَةِ قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ الْيَوْمُ أَصْحَابِ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned that this nation was split into 73 groups 73 sects, all of them in the hellfire except for one. The Sahaba, they said, which group is that, O Messenger of Allah? The Prophet wasallam. he said, it is the Jama'ah. And in another narration, the Prophet wasallam said, those who are upon what me and my companions are upon today. So the Jama'ah is explained by the other wording, those who are upon what me and my companions are upon today. The Jama'ah, Barakallah Fikum, it's not a specific masjid or a specific group of Salafis or a specific group of Ahl Sunnah excluding the others. The Jama'ah is that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions were upon. The Jama'ah is, as Abdullah bin Mas'ud stated, مَا وَافَقَ الْحَقِّ إِن كُنْتَ وَحْدَكَ That which is in agreement with the truth even if you are by yourself. So the point is, being upon that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and his companions were upon. That's what's important. That's what determines whether or not the person is from the Jama'ah. And not necessarily being with a specific group of people. Or being with a specific masjid. Or aligning oneself with a specific scholar from the scholars. That in itself doesn't make a person from the Jama'ah. Because a person can be a member of that masjid. A part of a certain group. Connected with a certain scholar, but at the same time, the individual is not upon what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahabu were upon. Therefore, he's not from those who are the Jama'ah. None. When we speak about the virtues of the day of Arafah, this is what comes to mind. The completion and the perfection of the religion. And this is an encouragement for the Muslims to hold on to their religion. Because choosing another way of life is choosing a path of destruction and loss. Choosing that which Allah Azza wa Jal is not pleased with. And we hear about the Muslims apostating, leaving the religion of Islam. We say to our brothers and sisters, hold on to your deen. Don't give up your religion for nothing. For indeed, the deen of Al-Islam is the greatest blessing that Allah has given. And there is nothing greater than this ni'mah of Al-Islam. And no matter how hard times become, hold on to your religion and know that the hard times, they do not last forever. And as for those who have apostated from the religion of Al-Islam, we say to them, upon you is to return back to that which Allah is pleased with. How can you in your right mind leave the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and the following of the greatest of mankind, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How can you leave this and go back to being a five percenter, claiming that the black man is Allah, but the black man is God. How can you leave Islam? La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. None has the right to be worshipped except for Allah, and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his messenger. How can you leave this 
and go back to worshiping Jesus, who is a man from amongst mankind, a prophet from the prophets of Allah, who has been, who was created by Allah. How can you leave the religion of Al Islam, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah, and go to being one who says that Allah doesn't exist, there is no God. Do not allow the shaitan to deceive you. Do not allow the chasing of the life of this world be that cause, that reason for you to leave this great bounty, mercy, and favor of Allah, which is Al-Islam. Our religion, Barakallah Fikum, is the only religion with Allah. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentioned, in the deen in the Allah al Islam. Indeed, the religion with Allah is Islam. When we speak about the virtues of the day of Arafah, Then Arafah, it is a day in which Allah Azza wa Jal, He frees His servants or His slaves from the hellfire. And this comes in the narration of Aisha radiyallahu anha qalat qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma min yawmin akthara an yu'taqa allahu abdin min al-nar min yawmi arafah Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there is no day which Allah frees a servant from the hellfire more than the day of Arafah. So this day of Arafah is a day in which Allah azza wa jal he frees his servants from the hellfire. And who from amongst us is not in need to be saved and freed and emancipated from the hellfire? For the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hellfire is unlike any punishment. And it's amazing how we find human beings in general, and I'm speaking to my Muslim brothers and sisters specifically, but human beings in general, they are afraid of the fire in the life of this world. If a person is in a home and the home catches on fire, the reaction of the person is to flee out of that home and run from that fire because of the harm and the destruction that the fire causes, and that it leads to death and the likes. So a person is in a place where there's fire, the person flees from the fire, naturally. But yet, when it comes to the fire of hell, the people do not flee from the fire of hell, rather they run towards it by way of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned Fattakun Nar. Fear the fire. The fearing of the fire that is commanded with by Allah is to run away from the hellfire by doing that which Allah has commanded. Run away from the hellfire by staying away from that which Allah has prohibited. So this day of Arafah 
is a day in which Allah Azza wa Jal, He saves His servants from the hellfire. And we should strive, barakallah fikum, to be from these people. And that should be by way of doing what Allah has commanded and recommended and staying away from the things that Allah Azza wa Jal has prohibited. Also, by making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He saves us from the hellfire. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes us from the people of paradise. This is what we as the believers, we are concerned with more so than anything. And yes, it is allowed for us to make dua for different things in this worldly life. But do not make the life of this world the most important matter. To where when we make dua, we only make dua for that which is connected to this worldly life. And we forget to make dua for safety and security in the hereafter. Another matter of benefit or virtue on the day of Arafah is that whoever fasts on the day of Arafah for the sake of Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will expiate the person's sins for the last year and the year to come. As has come in the narration, عَنَا بِقَتَادَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ قَالَ سُئِلَ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن صوم عرفة فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم يكفر السنة الماضية والباقية The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was asked the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked about fasting on the day of عرفة and he responded, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that fasting on the day of Arafah, it expiates the sins of the last year and the remaining year or the year to come. And this here, barakallahu fikum, is a great virtue. For how many sins have we committed last year? How many times were we disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing that which we know we had no right doing or saying that which we know we had no right to say? How many times have we disobeyed Allah? We can't even count the sins that we have committed because there's so many. May Allah forgive us all. So it's important that if we are in the position and have the ability to fast on the day of Arafah, which would be Monday, then it is upon us to fast. And alhamdulillah, this year the day of Arafah falls on the Monday. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his sunnah is that he used to fast on Mondays. So let the individual who's going to fast on the day of Arafah have two intentions. The intention to fast the day of Arafah and the intentions to fast on Monday. So now you get the reward for both intentions with one act of fasting. Also, Barakallahu Fikum, that which establishes the virtues of the day of Arafah is the statement 
of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Khairu Dua Dua wa Arafa The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said the best Dua is the Dua that is made on the day of Arafah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went on to say, وَخَيْرُ مَا قُلْتُ أَنَا وَالنَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ قَبْلِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, And the best of that which I have said, and the prophets before me, meaning on the day of Arafah, is, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la. None has the right to be worshipped except for Allah, who was alone without partners. Lahul mulk wa lahul ham. For him is the dominion, and for him is the praise. Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. And he is the one who is capable of doing all things. Ponder over this tremendous dua, or these words of remembrance. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la. This is what we have been created for. As Allah mentions, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجَنَّةِ وَالْإِنْثَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ So here we have the reminder of the purpose of creation. As Allah mentions, I have not created the jinn nor the mankind except to worship me. And in the statement, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah, who was alone and there, there are no partners for him. This is a reminder of the purpose of creation. This is a reminder of the greatest right from the rights, and that is the right of Allah as a to be worshipped alone, there being no partners for him. لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ For Allah is the ownership of the dominion. Complete ownership. So therefore, this is the reminder for us to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah is the one who owns everything. وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ And being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of everything, then for Him is all of the praise. As Allah azza wa jal mentions in the greatest surah, Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All of the praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the creation. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And Allah is capable of doing all things. Nothing, بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ is greater than Allah. There is nothing more powerful than Allah. There is nothing that can stop the decree of Allah when Allah decrees. There's nothing beyond the capability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This establishes for us and a reminder for us on the day of Arafah when we say these words of the greatness and the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no sin that's too great for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive. And there is no dua or request that is too great for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer. So we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humbling ourselves, acknowledging that He is the one who has the right to be worshipped, acknowledging that He is the one who controls and owns all of the affairs and all things, and that He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one deserving of all praise and all worship, and that He subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of doing all things. This is the best of that which was stated by the prophets on the day of judgment on the day of Arafah. Also Barakallahu Fikum from the virtues of the day of Arafah is that Allah Azza wa Jal He draws near to his slaves who are there standing in Arafah, and Allah Azza wa Jal, He brags about them. 
to the malaika. And this is a great and tremendous virtue. And if one has not made the hajj, then this here should be a great encouragement for one to go and make hajj. So that they can be from the people who Allah Azza wa Jal brags about. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned Wa in the Hu Layadnu Fuma Yubahi Bihim Al Malaika for Yakul Ma Arada Haula and then Allah he draws near to them and he brags about them to the angels and he says what do these individuals want? Being in Arafa is being in the place where Allah Azawajal answers the dua and he draws near to his servants in the manner that is befitting to his majesty. This is a great virtue, a great benefit for the people who are on Hajj. These are some of the benefits that we have in this blessed and beautiful day of Arafah, which will be this Monday coming, and afterwards the day of Eid. Keep in mind that which has been mentioned here, and do your best to make the best of the day of Arafah, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fasting if possible, making a lot of dua during this day, keeping one's tongue wet, with the greatest or best word of remembrance that can be said or statement of remembrance. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Keeping in mind that the day of Arafah is the day that Allah Azza wa Jal perfected and completed for us our religion and way of life. And the great favor that Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon us by allowing us to be Muslims. Keep these things in mind on the day of Arafah. And may Allah Azza wa Jal accept from us and from you all our worship. And may Allah Azza wa Jal make us from amongst those who be freed and saved from the hellfire. And whatever is correct, the praise is for Allah Azza wa Jal alone. Whatever is incorrect is for myself. Wa subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta staghfiruka wa atubi